name is Rob Barangu. I run the CRISPR lab at MC State in the Department of Food, Bioprocessing, and Nutrition Sciences. And I'm here to talk about CRISPR technologies in general and how they are shaping the future of food science in particular. CRISPR technology is based on CRISPR Cas immune systems that provide adaptive immunity in bacteria and archaea. Using CRISPR arrays, peculiar DNA repeated elements separated by what's called spacers, together with CRISPR-associated genes that encode Cas proteins. And CRISPR arrays, together with Cas proteins, provide DNA-encoded, RNA-mediated, DNA-targeting adaptive immunity in bacteria. And the way CRISPR works is by uptake of invasive DNA elements into CRISPR arrays as new spacers, then transcription of those arrays into small interfering RNAs that provide sequence-specific targeting of complementary sequences and cleavage of DNA uh, that is undesirable. In the last two years, this CRISPR-Cas immune system machinery has been repurposed with what's called genome editing, essentially to drive sequence-specific targeting and cleavage of DNA in any organism of interest, in any sequence of interest, at any location of interest. And essentially, the premise behind genome editing is that when you generate a double-stranded break, endogenous DNA repair machinery will reattach it together imperfectly, essentially generating a mutation, insertion, deletion, or SNP at the exact location of DNA cleavage, uh, thus editing that DNA sequence and editing the genome. Now, this genome editing technology has led to what people call the CRISPR craze. It's been scientifically very disruptive. If you look at publication rates, dissertation rates the last several years, it's compelling. It's been highly covered by the media, um, and it has led to a very compelling level of interest by different businesses, including medicine for gene therapy, including the ag world for plant breeding, including biotech for plant applications, and then last but certainly not least, the food world. And essentially, if you think of the wide range of bacteria used for food applications, CRISPR provides a lot of opportunities for various types of applications including using those unique vaccination events as a unique uh, signature DNA sequence in genomes of interest. And that can readily be, readily be used for genotyping applications. To a different extent, the natural ability of CRISPR-Cas systems to provide resistance against undesirable genetic elements like phages or plasmids can be used to vaccinate food cultures and or probiotics against phages and or plasmid to prevent, for example, plasmid uptake and dissemination uh, for elements that carry antibiotic resistance genes. And then last but not least, you can actually use or redirect the CRISPR machinery towards targeting the cell DNA itself and alter the genome, alter the transcriptome, remodel the genome completely by insertions or deletions, and or induce cell death um, and provide sequence-specific targeted killing for the eradication of genotypes of interest. As far as food is concerned, this technology has been used uh, in different ways already in the human food supply chain. For instance, the dairy bacterium Stregovus demophilus has been vaccinated naturally using CRISPR-Cas system to build resistance against phages, and those are used in the manufacturing of yogurt and all cheese. The same approach can be used for the genesis of nature origin probiotics, like lactobacilli and others. Um, to a different extent, those unique DNA fingerprints can be used as a unique signature for the genotyping, very high-resolution genotyping of pathogens like E. coli, Salmonella, and C. diff, or for the detection and or typing of spoilage organisms like undesirable lactobacilli. And then last but not least, self-targeting using CRISPR-Cas systems has been used to selectively target and eradicate undesirable pathogenic strains like E. coli and Salmonella. If you look at the whole food supply chain, there are tremendous opportunities for the use of CRISPR to alter microbiomes, phytobiome, animal microbiomes, manufacturing environments, the food microbiome itself, or the consumer's microbiome. And you can use bacterial typing, antimicrobial targeting, and or genome editing across the whole food supply chain. Altogether, the CRISPR elements hold tremendous value for a plethora of food-based applications. It's a compelling topic. It's a great time. The food industry is certainly a great place, and CRISPR provides tremendous opportunity moving forward for the genesis of next generation food products.